Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Angela Hardy, and today we're talking to Ryan Edmonds. Ryan is absolutely fascinating. Ryan has been doing all sorts of things. I actually met him originally. He looks like he's frozen, though, so we might have to come back to this. I met him originally um, when I was doing a free yoga session during lockdown. And um, I'm hoping he's sorting himself out in the background there because it looks like he's fallen off somehow on this Wi-Fi. But anyway, I met Ryan when I was doing a free yoga session online with um, Life Retreat Studios. And Ryan is all into yoga. He's got all sorts of information and studies behind him. He studied psychology. He studied yoga. And he's been producing a really, really fascinating course um, in the meantime while we've been on lockdown. And he's put it onto the same platform that I've got a couple of my courses on, which is the um, Life Retreat Academy um, on Teachable. So I'm going to just put that address at the bottom so you can have a look at it while he tries to sort out his video and come back on. And if that doesn't work, we'll go off and we'll come back on again. And I'll just go later onto Facebook and delete this. But Ryan is a yoga meister. He studied in India. He studied... Um, psychology in South Africa, I think it was, and he teaches, he has his own practice where he teaches in studio, and he teaches with a uh, life retreat studio, in and um, we're going to speak to him today all about the various things that he's been up to while COVID's been going on, all these wonderful online courses. Hi, Ryan, you're back. Hi, I'm back, you. Angie. Sorry <laughs> about that, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Meanwhile, I've been introducing you like you're a god. So, all good. <laughs> I hope I don't <laughs> disappoint. That's the flattery and all the fabulousness. So, this is Ryan. <laughs> so, Ryan, just before we get started into the wonderful things that you can um, speak to people about in relation to all these, these things that you've been up to during lockdown, tell me a little bit about your personal journey. I'm trying to know how you got here, how you got into yoga, how you, why you say psychology. What is this interesting passion that you've had that brought you to this place in your life? Thank you for the question, Angie. Um, you know, I grew up in a, in a home that was really, uh, I grew up with a, with a mother who was, I'm just trying to find a good angle for you guys here. Um, I grew up with a mother who was a Louise Hay Heal Your Life uh, facilitator. And that, you know, back in the, back in the 90s, um, what we do now was a bit taboo, actually, Angie. And, uh <laughs> And, and the, the work of self-empowerment and self-healing was very woo-woo to a lot of people. But I was fortunate to grow up um, in, in what people were then calling the New Age movement, which was actually very old age wisdom. And, um, and, being, sur yeah, and, and, and being surrounded by the teachings of the philosophies of, of you know, Louise Hay and Neil Donald Walsh and um, Esther and Jerry Hicks and... Uh, Deepak and you know all of those great authors that we all know and love um so and from a young age I myself was very very interested in world religion and philosophy I was I grew up as a little kid being able to hear and see a little bit more than what the people around me were apparently able to hear and see and um and and people used to come to me for advice people used to come to me for intuitive counseling by the age of 15 already uh, I was I was consulting with people and I was running my first uh, meditation circle at the age of 12 um, oh, that's amazing <laughs> which was amazing it was every Thursday night and and for how old am I now 33 so for 21 years I've been running that meditation circle non-stop pretty much um except for the lockdown. This was the first time that that stop, stopped in 22 years. So that was just the beginning. And, and it pursued into psychology. Um, I was a lifeline counselor. I was working with the South African Depression and Anxiety Group for, for many, many years as a, as a suicide counselor and also working in journalism in the media, uh, trying to help people to remove the stigma about mental health issues. And um, during that time, I studied clinical hypnotherapy, and uh, I was also a trained yoga teacher, both in the Ishta yoga system and the Kundalini yoga system. 
So the journey has been varied, Angie. It's been it's been a beautiful journey, and it's always just been it's been a search for truth. It's been a search for for something that can help humanity. I'm a a big proponent in in using ancient wisdom in a modern way to help people to realign to their joy, their well being. Um, I'm not big on on you know motivational speaking and rah 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 i just i just want us to be real authentic human beings who are having a good experience while we're on this journey and if i can help a little bit with that along the way then my job here is done that's beautiful i i'm with you my friend i feel very connected to you right <laughs> now about the whole subject so that's really amazing so when did you start studying the yoga you're going to laugh. The, you know, I started I started studying yoga in uh, 2007. So it was it was quite a while ago, about 14 years ago, 13 years. And um, I started because I had an amazing teacher and she was, uh, you know, when you're when you're 20 years old, anyone who's in their 40s or 50s feels ancient. So she felt like an old lady <laughs> to me at the time. Now, not so much yeah, anymore. <laughs> not so much anymore. But, um, you know, uh, and she she told me about a, a teacher named Marina Contardo, who was the chair lady of the Yoga Teacher Fellowship of South Africa. And she was running one more group of teacher trainings. And would I like to do it? And the universe conspired to help me financially. Uh, I was a student. I had no money. And I never, ever, ever saw myself being a yoga teacher. Never mind now. I, I'm the principal of Ishta Yoga School, which trains yoga teachers. <laughs> so I never, I never saw myself going into yoga at all as, um, as a line of work. And then... When I moved to Somerset West about seven years ago, it was the only thing that I could do at the time. And it just became, it became my dharma. It became my, my life path, my passion. Completely avoid from where the, the trajectory that I was taking, which was very clinical. I was working in very clinical psychological settings. And, um, and here I am with the turban and the... <laughs> <laughs> Rock in the look. <laughs> Rock in the look. <laughs> so I, I was saying earlier before you came on that I first class with you online at the beginning of the lockdown period. So you guys did a lot mm. of free stuff um, with Life Retreat Studio during the lockdown period. But you also you have a studio of your own. And how does that all work? What's that about? So, Angie, we, um, we started with, uh, if you're wondering why my screen is going, uh, I'm actually no, I know holding, you're holding my phone. I'm holding. <laughs> you have to go um, find Wi-Fi somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we, we, do, we do what we can, you know, to, to do what we can. So when the lockdown began, our initial feeling was people are going to need help right now people are going to need sanity and me i'm not the only the only yoga teacher and coach in in our area we're we're a close team of teachers um, who run different studios around the helderberg and and it was like a a consensus everybody said let's just do what we can online to help people and so we were offering for weeks, uh, lots of free uh, yoga classes daily, all day, every day. There was yoga, meditation, and uh, people around the world. We were having about six thousand people per class logging in, and um, just to just to connect. I think Angie to community, to like minds, to something that they could kind of hold that just felt simple and pure, and mm -hmm. sweet, because that's what mm -hmm. the yoga brings us. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we're still doing that online. We we have now a gently a gentle online membership. It's not expensive, but you know our teachers also have to survive. Our teachers also have to pay rent. Um, so we we ask a gentle exchange, 
But it's been a privilege for us to stay in touch with our communities while we're doing this. And, uh, and then from there, the thought came, well, I'm not doing anything at the moment. And I've always wanted to be doing online courses yes. for years. And, uh, and so it was the, the nudge that I needed. It was the push off the cliff. And mm. I could never look back now. Well, the one that really fascinates me, and we'll talk a little bit about all of them if, you, if we've got time, but the one that really fascinates me is that Heart of Yoga Sutra. I don't mm -hmm. even know what that means. So tell me about that. Okay. Ah, okay. Oh, there we go. So when I teach yoga teachers, when I train yoga teachers, mm -hmm. in the, I start by teaching them in the 200-hour hour level of yoga and there's just there's just so much juice there's so much beauty that you don't have enough time in 200 hours to to teach the ancient texts the ancient scriptures um all the all the original beautiful work that there is in in the in the five plus thousand years system of yoga and so for many years my students have been asking me to teach additional supplementary courses on the yoga sutras uh, and and it was just something i never was able to get around to and so finally during the lockdown i've been able to sit and put together this online course um, and and really finally be able to present the information in a way that is palatable and accessible for people you know, the, the Yoga Sutras itself is, um, is, is about 2,000 years old, a text. And it's a simple text. It's a small text. But it's, it requires a lot of pre-understanding on the mind and of meditation. People don't understand what yoga is nowadays in a modern context. We, we associate mm -hmm. yoga with postures and we think of yoga as that thing that you do at the gym yeah. um, or, or, or at the studio. And unfortunately, the, the stigma is, uh, you know, white middle-aged women in ski pants um, yeah. doing, doing headstands. That's, that's the stigma. I've had it for years. You know, guys say to me, I could never do yoga. Or, um, or I've had uh, people of color saying, oh, you know, I thought this was only a white people thing. And, and so yoga, yoga has, become, has become what we call whitewashed. Um, okay. and, and, and people have lost the essence of what yoga is. Because according to the Yoga Sutras, yoga is not actually a practice. Yoga is a state of being that is acquired wow. through a specific practice. And the yoga postures, the asana, are just one tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of that. It's not, it's not, it's, oh, um, it's not the whole piece of the puzzle. Okay. So the yoga sutras that you teach in this course, these are the, the, the understandings. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, tell me more. I'm not, I'm not exactly getting what okay. are the sutras. What, what are, give me some of, give me some of what they're going to, what they're going to create for me or do for me or help me to understand. Amazing. So, Okay, the Yoga Sutras is a, is a collection of 196 statements that were compiled into a text, giving us the meaning of what yoga and meditation are and the steps to achieving a state that we call samadhi. Samadhi is a state of personal, I don't like the word enlightenment, but I'll, I'll say it now and then I'll unpack it. Samadhi is a state of, of awakeness, awareness, whereby we no longer see the universe as dualistic, me versus you. We, we completely integrate the oneness of all that is life, of every person. All of a sudden, once, once I've experienced the state of Samadhi, I don't see a difference between Angie and Ryan and the tree. Mm. I see the oneness in that consciousness the yoga sutras teaches that your individual soul what we call the jiva atman is is 
a, an extension of the cosmic soul, the universal soul, what we call the Paramatman. People could say God or source or whatever it is. Um, the terms don't really matter too much to us. So, so if, if God or the, the cosmic soul was like the ocean, then your individual soul is a drop from that ocean. And, oh my gosh, this phone, <laughs> this phone of mine is playing games with me, Ange. Um, the, the individual soul, being this drop of consciousness, takes on form and has identity in time and space. But it's still made of the same substance as the ocean. And when it returns back to the ocean, it merges with where it came from that eternal consciousness and so the teachings state that for a time we have we have individuality and we have form but we came from the ocean of consciousness and we return to the ocean of consciousness now during our lives we get confused and we think that we are lost and alone and we are this tiny little thing in this big universe and we forget that we are made of the same stuff as our origin. And so yoga is the state of union with the origin, a remembering of who and what we really are. And the Yoga Sutras gives us a, a formula and a guide to being able to actually reawaken to that remembering and to, to kind of, it's not a big People think that, that samadhi or enlightenment is this big flash, you know, this realization. But it's actually, it's a process of awakenings throughout your life. And, and, and we've all experienced it. Every time you have an aha moment and all of a sudden you see life and yourself and the world a little bit clearer, you, you, you've aligned more to a state of yoga, a state of union with that true consciousness of all that is. So the Yoga Sutras walk us through a step-by-step -step on how we can get a little bit closer to that awareness of who we truly are. It's actually, it's a very deep spiritual goal. It's a very deep spiritual subject, isn't it? It's, 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 it's immense. And you know, the way I've set it out in, the, in this course because now you can you hear it's like as you say it's it's immense. Mm. I've called this course the heart of the yoga sutras because in this course I'm just giving the the essence of the teachings. I'm just exploring the oh my goodness me. You know sometimes things in life remind us to always have a sense of humor and <laughs> and when you're having my... to stand around finding the one <laughs> Wi-Fi corner that's going to work. And... My and my camera, hold on, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what? I've been holding a, I've been holding a gimbal and I'm going to okay. just attach you guys for a moment and there use my go. good old fashioned hands. So, <laughs> so, and um, this course is there not to go too deep into the study. It's there right. to give you insight into the soul, like terms like the soul, consciousness, right. the mind, mm -hmm meditation what are these things what is yoga what is meditation what is consciousness what is your soul that itself is a massive question and just starting to get people familiar with these ideas um maybe to spark some inspiration into a deeper journey so you don't have to be someone who's done yoga, studied yoga, is a yoga teacher for this course to be really adding no. value to your life. This is the little, the first, let me take your hand and dip your foot into the water so you can start to understand where you're going here. Is that right? That's absolutely it. In okay. fact, yeah, in fact, we don't, nowhere in this course do we even do yoga postures. There are no yoga poses mentioned in the yoga sutras. It's all about the mind. It's all about meditation. It's all about sitting and observing your thoughts, Angie, and, and just having a look and going, when I have a thought, if, if we see, okay, the, the opening line of the Yoga Sutras says, 
Yoga Chitta Vritti Narudaha. Yoga is a state of being that is achieved when the ripples on the surface of the lake of the mind, and we call these ripples thought, feeling, desire, memory, a memory, emotion. When these ripples come to a point of natural stillness and subsiding, yes. without force, without suppression, yes. we're able to see truly down into the depths of the lake of who we are yes. and get real clarity on ourselves yes. rather than being bombarded with just, you know, this constant whirlpool Chatter. that's in the mind. And so it teaches us simple, simple but powerful tools, such as just sitting down and looking at your thoughts and going, how much emotional charge does this thought have? Um, is, this, is, this a, is this a charge of, of attachment? Do I need the thing I'm thinking about? Or is it a thought of a charge of repulsion? I don't want that. Mm. Or is the thought neutral? doesn't really have much of a charge. And so we, we start to explore like this, gently, the layers of mind mm -hmm. and how mind works and what is function of mind so mm -hmm. that you can finally know who you are because the mind for some people is a, a very treacherous <laughs> field. It's a mind you know. field. <laughs> it's a mind field. Exactly. And it's not. Our mind is, we are not our mind, as yeah. you know, Angie. We are not our body. And yet we in the West become very locked in our heads. We become very, very cerebral. And you know what? The Yoga Sutra says, if you can just be present mm -hmm. and, and, and you don't have, and you have, you have the power over your mind to not let these internal minds go off these minefield bombs you then realize that right now outside it's raining and it, mm. and the sun is coming out and it's mm. today actually everything's okay mm. we're far more present we're far more able to just know who we truly are and, and in that comes the simplicity of life. So at the beginning, it sounds complex. And people are saying, wow, this is a lot of information. And the reason is, is because human beings make life complex. We sure and we, do. We, feel, we feel we need a complex solution. <laughs> we no. feel we need a complex solution. <laughs> Don't you know what scattered is going on here? I need a lot for that to settle down. But you don't. You need actually less. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Because the pro my, my, my problem is in my practice is when, when yeah, when, when I tell my clients, I'm sure you've had this, when I tell my clients, um, they come to me with panic attacks, for instance, and I say to them, just go and walk on the beach every day and make this gentle adjustment to your diet. They, mm -hmm. they, they refuse to believe that that will help. Mm -hmm. um, they, want, they want something more, far more complex. So the, the human mind is an interesting place like that. And yet at the end of the day, we're just, we're just a drop from the ocean, exploring and experiencing this beautiful dimension and returning back to that infinite source again. Yeah. It's very interesting when you spoke about grasping and rejection or holding back something. I mean, I think this is what you're talking about and also what I teach and obviously what you teach as well is this we don't we don't realize that the experience that we're having is generated by our own mind. Yeah. It's not coming from the outside in. The outside is just giving us a tap and saying, what do you want to do with this? And our primary goal in terms of if we want to have an, a good experience of our lives, we have to understand our minds. And it sounds like this course is a really good way to start to step into that understanding of your own mind, understanding of how you're creating your mind and therefore your experience of life. Through your grasping, through your rejection, through your thinking, through the listening to the chat of this choppy waters experience and thinking mm -hmm. that that is the real thing and not knowing better. Exactly. How much, how much, Angie, of our own, of our own 
view of reality comes from the narrative that we tell ourselves. All of it. Exactly. All of it. Yeah. All of it. And that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. That we don't realize that, that this is just a narrative is the problem. And the moment we start to recognize that my entire experience is generated through my entire narrative and the narrative is made up. Yes. Again, we have a little like, oh, hold on. Well, if I made it up to hurt me, yeah. then maybe I could choose a different way of looking at things. That doesn't hurt me since I made it up anyway. That's exactly it. And that, that is what people don't understand what meditation is. Meditation right. is not, not this um, serene sitting there with this beautiful expression oh. on your face uh, on the beach. Not even if you wear a hood, people. Not no, hood. no, no. Not you, even you, don't even, <laughs> you don't even need the fashion accessories. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, you know, I mean... <laughs> Some days I'm, I, I, I dress as a yogi and some days I dress as a surfer with a backwards cap. I'm still the same right. soul, you know. Exactly. And um, But what, okay. what meditation is, is meditation, I, I, I think people would be surprised. Oh, they were losing Ryan. Oh, we've lost Ryan. So I'll finish that thought for him while he comes back. Are you back? I, I'm back. I don't know. Okay, I don't good. know what's going on today, guys. Sorry. Well, we'll bumble through, or we'll do it again another time. It's all good. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. All right. So, so you know, people think that we were saying that that meditation should be this gorgeous, serene act, and yet good luck. meditation is is the process of cleaning the garage. You know, it's the process yeah. of of getting in there and dusting off the shelves and and looking at things that we haven't looked at in a long time and go, oh my gosh, you know, throw that out or polish that up. Um, and so I, my, my aim is really to, to take the stigma away from meditation because people think that meditation is difficult. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's something that you can only do if your mind is clean and quiet. Now I've got mm -hmm. a surprise for you. That's not the truth. Mm -hmm. Your garage don't clean itself. Your muscles don't become strong if you don't go to gym. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and meditation is the gym for your mind. That's what it is. It's going in and doing your push-ups inside yourself so that when that narrative comes up, you, you see it. Yes. And you go, ah, I see you. Yeah. I see you. I'm not getting caught up in the story anymore. That's not my story anymore. I see it. It's a part of me, but it doesn't have power over me. Right. Exactly. That's why they call it a practice, not a not not something else, you know? Because if you think that you're it's gonna go practice. and do it in this way that it's illusional myth, you're wrong. What no. you're gonna do is you're gonna go practice every day and it's gonna be like any other practice, you're gonna sweat a little bit. <laughs> you know, every time you do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Yes, indeed. And uh, so, so this course delves into, into all of this, Angie, and it, it really gives us a true understanding for people, especially who've kind of lost the understanding of what yoga and meditation are, that it's not about headstands and handstands. Mm -hmm. It really is not. It's about, it's about discovering your true essence, not discovering, remembering, remembering mm -hmm. who you are. Sounds absolutely delightful. I'm, I actually have a copy of the course myself. And as soon as I'm finished the other course that I'm busy doing, um, I'm going to jump on and do it as well. It sounds, I can't wait to see you in action. So I've got the address, liferetreatstudioteachable.com, which is where this course is accessible, along with your other courses. Just very briefly, can you tell us about what other courses you've got there? Because you have been a busy little bumblebee. I have, I have. Um, it's been a great time of creativity for me. Um, I offer courses in, in tarot. Uh, I, I teach the tarot online, and that is to help people to develop their intuition um, through using symbols and images and stories, uh, because so much of the human mind is, is stories and symbolism. Right. And, uh, and so the tarot helps to unlock that for us. And uh, But soon... 
Uh, on the 20th of July, I'm going to be releasing my exciting new journey. It's a three-month journey through the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And okay. I don't know if you, you know the book. You know the book? I know the book. Hmm. So I thought to myself at, in meditation, it came to me, before you can focus on spiritual topics with people, people need food and people need money to get that food. You know, Angie, people, um, no, one, no one's going to be focusing on highfalutin spiritual philosophies if they've been retrenched or if the lockdown has, has, has really affected their financial standing because that's the mm -hmm. basis of us. Money is the currency that we use in this to world free, to be safe. to freak right? ourselves out. <laughs> so I, I thought, let's help people shift their, their mind. Let's shift their consciousness towards money and abundance. Because yeah. I'm just going to give him a moment. And if he doesn't come back, I'll just tell you a little bit about where you can get his courses. And then we'll close up and maybe talk to him again another day. It seems like his Wi-Fi is really a bit dodgy. He's had to put himself in this corner, which is why he's bouncing up and down. So you can go and check out all of Ryan's courses at the link below. Um, and you can see my courses there too um, on the Teachable Studio, this, the Life Retreat Studio on Teachable. And you can buy them there. They're cheap as chips. They're really not a big investment. And so it's really, really cheap and easy to get yourself engaged in really starting to try to Help your own self in terms of your spiritual growth, in terms of coming, coming to a place where you can work with your own mind, with your own creator of your experience. So I really encourage you to go online and check out Ryan's courses. While you're there, you're welcome to also check out my courses, of course. And if you have any questions for Ryan or for me in terms of what it is that we do or how we can help you on a personal level, the two of us will both put our um, contact details below this video in the Facebook comment section. And if you're watching it on YouTube, in the section below on YouTube. So he seems to be gone. He's lost his Wi-Fi completely, completely. I just want to say thank you very much for joining us. And I hope this was useful to you or at least inspiring to you. And there's some way that it's touched your heart that will allow you to move forward in this time and make a better life for yourselves in an internal looking at yourselves kind of way. So happy days to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and a wonderful week. Cheers for now.